Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for String Tech Workstations. Uh, I have a Breedlove guitar here that we need to reset the neck, so I'm just getting ready to heat this up. We have a couple of guitar neck resets that we're going to do a taste test comparison on. So. so this should prove to be an interesting lesson. Now I have already removed the two fasteners that go through the neck block and you'll have a good close look at that before we're done. We just put a bit of heat on there, about seven minutes. I have sharpened that probe and buffed it out on the uh, sander and the buffer. So this is our first kind of run of seven minutes. So it looks like this should come off fairly easy. So we'll see how much luck we have here. When this lets go, you want to be holding on to the body because the... So the fasteners are out. The neck is held obviously by the uh, neck assembly on the XLT. So we just want to work our way through here gently and release that fingerboard extension. And it looks, it looks like seven minutes should do it actually. It's uh, coming out pretty clean. Let me get around the other side. I roll that bulldoze just a little bit at a time. Get that to release. There we go. I have that tongue depressor sharp and that will allow me to kind of hold my place here in the corner. And then we'll make our way up to the neck junction. So there's two things happening here. The actual probe itself was buffed on my buffer. I'm going to buff it up again, which will give us a little bit of heat. So not enough heat to scorch the soundboard, but enough heat to sort of sink through the glue line. That's what we're after here to get this to release. Oh, that's feeling pretty good. I think we got it. Yeah, I think we're there. Just God. This is the neck joint for the Breed Love guitar. So there's two Murakoshi fasteners that go through the head block on the inside and pull the heel in tight to the sides. There's three beads of epoxy that are used to kind of hold the fingerboard extension down. And in the case of this one, and this is why I call tech support, everything came off super clean right on the glue line. Now this did pull the finish. So it was this indexing pin that wasn't allowing me to remove the neck. And because it's maple, like I know you can slip sandpaper in and pull it and you spend a half a day doing that. I want to be able to use my little mini die grinder disc and take this down in a hurry. So I'm going to clean up all this stuff here and here and then we'll reattach the neck and get intimate contact between the fingerboard extension and the top. Okay, I have masked off the footprint of that fingerboard extension so when I go to clean up the top I know to stay within the confines of the tape. A lot of people would not go to this extent but the CNC cut here and that cavity, that thickness between the finish and the bottom of that cavity is 26 thou. Uh, I, I'm going to clean this up. I will probably put a veneer in there. I really don't want to go with epoxy. I want to use regular wood glue. So it's just my choice. I don't feel like just filling it up with epoxy and closing it in. Uh, I want to get an intimate contact between the underside of the fingerboard extension and the soundboard surface. Well, here's another use for my multi-use rotor plate. So I've got hockey pucks under there. I just wasn't comfortable just filling that void with epoxy and putting the neck back on. I want intimate contact, 100%, and I want to use wood glue. So a light scuff with some sandpaper, and I'm going to inlay a piece of solid wood veneer in there, level with the finish on either side of the fingerboard extension. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. I'm much happier with this. 
uh, we'll get 100% contact between our shim and the soundboard and then we'll sand that shim flush with the finish and this will give us a much better joint Good. give that glue squeeze just a little, a little wipe So what I have here is I have like a foam gasket and this is the stuff that you guys get in your kits, your fret guards. So we're just going to weight that on there. Okay, now I can get back to the neck. So this is how I set up with the GPS neck assembly to skim the tip of that neck heel to change the neck angle. For all you guys with your GPS units, I want to bring you in a little closer and show you how I have a positive stop for the sliding neck assembly. On the spring-loaded rail, put an Allen key in here. So engage this fastener on the underside of the rail with the Allen key. And you see that? See how that screw protrudes through the floor of the female rail? That is your positive stop. The male rail butts up against that fastener protruding through the female rail. And that's how I set up for this. The cinch hooks in the canvas straps allow you to strap that neck down firmly against the sliding V blocks. And this puts the heel right at chest level. So now I'm ready to take out the die grinder and just skim off that tip. Okay, so I'm adjusting the air. Yep, I don't want too much torque there. So we're basically taking the lion's share off the tip and then going to zero where the heel meets the underside of the fingerboard. There we go. I'm just following the line of the tape. You know, the rest I am going to finish with a little sanding stick. Uh, so I'm blending this portion where I took the most off at the tip in a straight line so that we work our way up to the underside of the fingerboard where we took off nothing. And this is how we tilt the neck back. Now I know a lot of people will just kind of loosen the neck off and slip some sandpaper in and then pinch it and pull it out. And I've done that myself and on some repairs, but in this case, with rock maple, <laughs> I'm gonna be there for hours doing what I just did in seconds. <sighs> okay, over to the guitar. We've got a beautiful fit and perfect neck angle on this Breedlove guitar. Here's the other side. So I'm just heating up the glue. This is a little trick I use to heat up my uh, regular carpenter's glue because we're gluing this on with wood glue. It'll be much easier to remove many years down the road when the time comes. Okay, we're ready to go. We've got that glue warmed up. It's, I warm it up with the heater as I showed you a second ago. This isn't like high glue. You don't heat it up to 140 degrees. Just so that it's warm. I like the idea of warm wood, warm glue. So unlike before where it was just kind of glued to the finish, now we've got wood to wood contact. And that's, that's why I'm going to the trouble to do this. We're going for 100% intimate contact from the underside of the fingerboard to the top. So I actually put two Allen keys in so I can get both bolts started. Not snugging it down yet. 
you have that little bit of forgiveness to kind of line this up perfectly. The uh, regular carpenter's glue has a little bit more open time. So you could reposition a little bit if you need to. I'm happy with that. This is the Allen key they give you. Now I ended up cutting this off because with these shallower guitars I couldn't actually give this a spin. Now I can engage it in that Murakoshi fastener and give it a full spin without it touching the back of the guitar. So that's our bottom bolt. That is our top fastener. Before I put any clamping pressure on that fingerboard extension, I'm pulling this intersection down tight and then tightening both fasteners to pull the heel in tight. And now we're ready to put that call on. So I've got a curvature on the underside of this so it keeps the pressure on the outside of the fingerboard. Put this on like so. And then I've got these extensions to sort of skip over that head brace. You don't want to crush that. And this will give us the pressure we need. Although it's a heavy clamp, it doesn't need much clamping pressure. We've got a great fit here. That's what I want to see. There's glue squeeze all the way around. Grab this side. Good. So I see glue squeeze all the way around there, and that's what we want. So these are these little scoop-up sticks that you've seen me use in other videos, and they allow me to get in nice and tight and get that excess glue cleaned up. So usually I've got three of these made up before I started gluing. And I can reach in and get this end squeeze like in that. And we'll get this side as well. At this point I'll move to a fresh stick, nice and dry. Like in that. So I've got my damp cloth here wrapped around that scoop up stick and that basically completely cleans up any trace of glue. I'll go across the end here. A little bit of glue oozing up through that indexing pin hole that they use during the uh, initial manufacturing process when they put the neck on. We'll get that as well. And now I follow up with my dry stick. I actually see a little bit of glue squeeze there. I'm going to grab that before I use this dry cloth. Bit of light on there to just see how accurate we did get and that's looking really good yeah there was a major gap here when the guitar came so it never really had intimate contact from the underside of the fingerboard to the soundboard surface it sure does now a little bit more glue squeeze there look at that and i am very happy with that be interesting to see uh, if the customer notices any uh, difference in the uh, actual sound of the guitar now that we've got that intimate contact. All right, I'm going to leave that, let that set, and get the rest of those frets out of the strap. Four minutes on high. There we go, four minutes on high. Now this, it doesn't look, uh, you know something? I am going to score that just in case there's a satin lacquer across. It doesn't look like there is, but I'm not taking any chances. No, there's definitely no lacquer on that, so let's see how we do here. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Whew! That's as clean as it gets. You can see they put a little spot of crazy glue there. Nice.
That's looking beautiful. Very light fret dress at this top end. I'm just onto the compensated nut right now. The original nut came out super clean. Now we're going to fit the compensated nut blank. Well, the Breed Love guitar is done. Frets dress, neck reset, compensated nut. This is the fourth set of strings, actually. I ended up settling on this string. It just seemed to work best. It's a kind of a hybrid, 10 to 50. But it tunes beautifully, plays beautifully. It just seemed to really respond uh, with this gauge of string at concert pitch. So it's a breeze to play now. Silky smooth, beautifully in tune, finger style or strumming. Done deal. Well, this is what we ended up with, these uh, 10 to 50 strings. So this is another thing in G minor. that and, and I'm just going to kind of blow over top of it. We'll let that play. So the guitar definitely uh, intonates better. Now this is just the acoustic guitar, there's no system here. So it's not a big booming guitar, it's just a beautiful guitar to play. It's so comfortable to hold, it's a tiny little thing. So with, with the 10 to 50 thou,
So this is a 12 fret guitar. The neck meets the body at the 12 fret. From here to here it's like a classical guitar and it is wider spacing. responsive to a light touch. And the customer actually is having problems with arthritis so I bounce back and forth between four different sets of strings and this is what I settled on so it's it's kind of lighter than a custom light and slightly heavier than extra light. Anyway, it's a delight to play. And you can, it's still firm enough with a light touch, you can strum it. And that is it for the Breed Love guitar. From what I understand, it sat unused for years. Well, he'll be reaching for it now, guaranteed. Cheers.